The Supreme Court has dealt a stinging blow to the Bush administration. In a 5-4 decision Thursday, the court held that prisoners in Guantanamo Bay have the constitutional right to challenge their detention in civilian federal courts. The Military Commissions Act of 2006 had stripped the prisoners of their habeas corpus rights. Some of the prisoners have been held without charge for more than six years. Justice Anthony Kennedy joined the four liberal justices on the court to provide the majority opinion and wrote, quote, the laws and constitution designed to survive and remain in force in extraordinary times. But dissenting Chief Justice John Roberts said the system at Guantanamo included, quote, the most generous set of procedural protections ever afforded aliens detained by this country as enemy combatants. The ruling marked the third time in four years the Supreme Court has ruled against the Bush administration concerning the rights of Guantanamo prisoners. President Bush, speaking from Italy, said he did not agree with the decision. It's a deeply divided court, uh, and I strongly agree with those who dissented. We'll study this opinion. And uh, we'll do so with this in mind to determine whether or not Additional legislation might be appropriate so that we can safely say, or truly say, to the American people, we're doing everything we can to protect you. Human rights groups across the world, however, have welcomed the Supreme Court decision. We're joined now in the Firehouse Studio by Vince Warren, Executive Director of the Center for Constitutional Rights, which represents dozens of prisoners at Guantanamo. Welcome to Democracy Now! This is your case. Talk about it. Thanks so much for having me. This, uh, Juan and Amy, is one of the largest cases uh, with respect to constitutional rights and certainly with respect to the habeas corpus of the rights of the detainees um, in recent memory. The, the Supreme Court um, gave the detainees an almost unconditional win in terms of vindicating their rights. And the argument that we've been making for the last six and a half years since we filed the first habeas corpus case is that when the government flies the American flag over a prison uh, in Guantanamo, the rights of the detainees therein uh, really do extend to the mainland and extend to uh, federal courts. This battle that we've been fighting over habeas corpus has literally been not about guilt or innocence. It's just been about being able to have the claims heard by real judges in federal courts to determine whether George Bush has detained the men legally or not. Now, the, this decision does not affect every, uh, uh, every detainee there, right? But generally, virtually all of them. Well, virtually all of them. And uh, it really is aimed at the roughly 260 men who have been languishing in Guantanamo for many years, but have never had an opportunity to, be, to go before a federal court and who haven't been charged by the Bush administration with anything. They're just sitting there. Some of those detainees have actually been cleared for release for a couple of years, uh, and they've never had an opportunity opportunity to say to anyone in authority, um, I've been detained illegally, I'm factually innocent, what have you. So this is a wonderful opportunity for them. And then there are about a dozen uh, detainees that are now already beginning uh, facing the military uh, commissions. Uh, how does it affect them? Well, that's right. The, uh, you know, between 15 and, and 19 men are facing military commissions, which are essentially uh, quote-unquote trials, and they are really political show trials with uh, no meaningful due process protections. Um, the ruling is not particularly clear on how it affects them. I think what we can say about the ruling, though, is that uh, Justice Kennedy and the other justices were so harshly critical of the lack of due process, the lack of the ability of men to challenge evidence, to bring forth their own claims. Those are the same problems that exist in the military commissions. And the thing that underlines, underlies the entire situation is the specter of torture. The Supreme Court, this is the third ruling. Explain how the first ruling didn't change things, the second ruling didn't, now we're on the third. Does this matter? Third ruling in four years. Yes, that's uh, a very good point. And when we heard uh, in the clip President Bush talking about exploring legislative options, that's precisely what he did after the last two rulings um, and used Congress as a way to get around the Supreme Court. Briefly, here's what happened. Uh, the first 20 men were brought to Guantanamo in January of 2002. The Center for Constitutional Rights and other lawyers filed the first habeas 
habeas corpus petitions in February of 2002. Those cases advanced to the Supreme Court and ended up in a decision called Rasul versus Bush. And in that decision, um, the argument was that the statutory right to habeas, that is the federal law that says uh, if you're detained, you have habeas applied to the men in Guantanamo. In 2004, the Supreme Court says that that law, that federal law, does apply to the men in Guantanamo and they can go to federal courts. Well, Congress came back in uh, 2005 and passed what was called the Detainee Treatment Act. The Detainee Treatment Act, among other things, uh, literally, quite literally changed the words in that law to say that it specifically did not apply to men in Guantanamo, which then meant that the men could no longer go to federal court. In 2006, um, we were involved in a case called uh, Hamdan, and Hamdan, who people might know, was uh, supposed to be uh, Osama bin Laden's uh, driver, and he was challenging a military commission system that was put in place by the Bush administration uh, without congressional approval. Um, in that case, the Supreme Court uh, invalidated the, the George Bush regime of military commission, saying that he didn't have congressional approval to do that. So literally. Um, Two months later, Congress came back and passed the Military Commissions Act. Now, the Military Commissions Act did a number of things. The first piece is that they it um, established congressional authority to create these military commissions that are, are moving forward that we call show trials. But the other thing that it did was that it literally said that judges, federal judges, could not hear cases coming from the men in Guantanamo, Guantanamo about habeas. So while the, the uh, earlier Supreme Court said that the men had rights to habeas, the Congress came back and said it doesn't matter what rights they have because we're not going to let federal judges hear those claims. And so the case that we've just uh, won in the Bomidian versus Bush claim. And who is Bomidian? Bomidian is a... Uh, is a detainee that has been involved in, uh, uh, he's, he's representing a group of six detainees, and they're from Bosnia. It's an interesting story about him. You hear about George Bush talking about how these men were picked up on the battlefield. Well, Bomidian and, and his uh, uh, compatriots were actually not picked up on the battlefield. They were accused of threatening to blow up an embassy in Bosnia. Uh, they were arrested by the Bosnian police. They were held in jail for three months. The Supreme Court of Bosnia and Herzegovina said that there was no evidence to have them detained because there was no evidence that they were attempting to do this and ordered them released. The day that they were released, the Bosnian uh, officials turned them over to the U.S. and they've been in Guantanamo ever since. But the, the last two times that Congress acted in 2004, 2006, there was a Republican Congress at the time. And so there's, uh, is there an expectation now that there won't be another effort by the Democratic-controlled Congress now to, to attempt once again to circumvent a, a court decision? Well, you know, having been involved in the Guantanamo litigation for the last six and a half years, I'm very careful about what my expectations are. I will say that um, this Congress has a golden opportunity. Um, something that they have not availed themselves of in the past with respect to Guantanamo, to actually make a Supreme Court ruling stick. And for the Democrats that talk about uh, George Bush's failed policy with respect to Guantanamo, this is the opportunity to resist that. This is the opportunity to say um, that the Supreme Court has spoken, the rule of law prevails, and we're not going to mess with it. There, there are those, though, who will say that while the Bush administration has been defeated, uh, perhaps finally on this issue, uh, and the system uh, and the right of habeas corpus has been preserved, effectively, for the last six years, they've been able to do what they wanted. For the last six years, the Bush administration has had its way with the rule of law. They really do use the Constitution as an on-off switch. And every time that the Supreme Court switches it on, uh, the Bush administration and Congress switch it off. Uh, John McCain, the presumptive now Republican nominee, addressed the Supreme Court decision at a news conference in Boston on Thursday. It obviously concerns me. Uh, these are unlawful combatants. They are not American citizens. But, um, and I think that we should pay attention to Justice Roberts' opinion in this decision. But it is a decision the Supreme Court has made. Now we need to move forward. As you know, I always favored closing of Guantanamo Bay, and I still think that we ought to do that. John McCain, a torture survivor himself in Vietnam. John McCain was the chief sponsor of the Detainee Treatment Act that actually uh, changed the rules after the first decision in 2004. Uh, here's, here's what's going on here. Um, the thing that underlies all of this 
is the interrogation policies and torture. Uh, the reason why the Bush administration has not wanted these men to go to federal court is because, not because they are concerned that the men will be released. Uh, let's not, let's not be, let's not kid ourselves about that. It is literally about the detainees in talking about how they've been treated will be clear about the fact that many of them were tortured and abused. So the Bush administration has tried to avoid by all costs to have a federal judiciary uh, preside over these cases so that these issues come out for the public. You know, the, the Bush administration has been denying for years that they torture, and it's been mostly the media that has uh, unearthed uh, the depth of the torture that's happened. And that true story needs to come out. Well, I want to thank you very much, Vincent Warren, for joining us, Executive Director of the Center for Constitutional Rights. As we move right now to our next segment, to the Ohio Congress member, Juan. Yes, well, Ohio Congress member and former